UTS Football Club will line up in the final of the FA Carlsberg Vars this Sunday. The celebrations at Staveley came months after they first entered the competition in the second round proper back in November 2011. This video looks back at Dunstan's Vars campaign and finds out exactly what it means to reach Wembley. I've won quite a bit at Dunstan, I've won the league a couple of times and that, but not on a scale of this. This is just like out my wildest dreams, it's what every player dreams of, playing at Wembley and Obviously, non-league players dream of playing in the Vars final, and obviously we've got two teams from the North East, and every player's going to fulfil that, you know. And it's just a dream come true for a lot of people, not just the players, uh, committee and supporters as well. And you're a Dunstan lad, so is it kind of a little bit extra special that you're taking your home team down there as well? Ah, uh, it just means everything division. You know, I live about two minutes away from you yeah, and Dunstan, um, and I. Everybody who will be sitting in the stands actually at Wembley, and it's uh, it's a dream come true on a personal note. Um, but it's a players that it means the most to go out there and, and show what the, what they can do on the football pitch. It's just going to be brilliant for them, you know. For all Dunstan have never reached the final before, they aren't strangers to the latter stages of the competition. And captain Ben Catanac talks about the club's history with the Vars. I think this has been building for the last five years. We. We got to the last 16 against Lowestoft uh, a few years ago and then we were unlucky the next year and then we got to the quarter-final against Whitley Bay. So we've, we've, been, we've been good Vars um, performers in the last few years. This has been building and, uh, and this year we've you know, we got the right draw and we had the right performances and, and, and it's all sort of come together quite nicely. And some of those matches this year have been a little bit dramatic. Um, there was the 4-3 at Peterborough and then you went down to 10 men at Staveley. Was there ever a point where you think it's not for us again this season. Yeah, I think the two games that you mentioned are probably the the, the only times when I've when I've maybe felt that um, we weren't going to do it. So there was a, a point when we were just went an extra time against Peterborough and we went a goal down. And uh, I suppose everybody kind of thought this is going to be a tough a tough one to get back into because we had loads of possession in the second half and couldn't quite turn it into a goal. But fortunately, we, we made it through that game. And then in the semi-final at Staveley, when uh, when we went down to ten men, and then we went two one down, I suppose there was a moment when we thought this is going to be really tough. Um, but I think when when they went went down to ten men, uh, I was always confident we were going to get through. Dunstan did get through. A Stephen Goddard goal late on meant the Gateshead based club won the semi final 3 2 on aggregate and booked their place at Wembley. But boss Billy Irwin looks back at earlier rounds when an exit from the competition looked on the cards. Well, I'll gone back as far as Wisbeach at half time. We were out, we were getting beat 1 0, and I was looking around the change room, people had. We were out, you know, and a um, few harsh words were said from me and Hara, and they come out and we scraped through then, beat them in the replay, but then the Peterborough one was just. God knows how we got through that, at what type of game it was, it was just unreal. And then the Stavely one, this, uh, this, the second leg of the semi-final. Mm. Half-time were out, bully sent off, and um, then we're on the up, you know. But, um, the lads showed tremendous character, and we deserve to be in the final from the run that we've had. Um, they showed unbelievable character from the first round all the way through. In just eight games, Dunstan have scored 30 goals so far, 12 of them coming against Blackwell in the second round proper. And as Wembley beckons, striker Andrew Bulford is on the verge of breaking a goal scoring record. Every game, including replays, um, if I score at Wembley, that beats Paul Chow's record because he didn't score in every, he scored in every round but not every game. But the 25 year old is more bothered about collecting a winner's medal with his team at Wembley than breaking records. I, I, I've told loads of people this, that, that if someone told us we'd win and I didn't score, I'd take that any day. I don't care about the record as long as we win at Wembley. That's every, every man's dream who, who enjoys football. To play, even just to go to Wembley is a big thing, but to, to play there is something not many people will ever do in their life. Over the past few weeks there's been talk of Matty Annan, who you lost last year, yeah. and, and how you're going to go to Wembley and try and win it for him. Tell yeah. us a little bit about Matty, what he would have made of, of the success yeah. of Dunstan this season. That's probably the, the downside, you know, I just wish Matt, Matty could be at the seat all. I'm sure he will be from upstairs, looking down on me, you know, but um, he was a real character. I think it was nine years he was here, he wasn't just a physio, on a, to me he was a mate, and to a lot of the players that's going to be playing at Wembley. Um, it hit me hard last year, it was just before the quarter final against Whitley Bay and it really hit me hard. Um, but the lads have got something planned before the game for Matty in his honour. Um, 
and if we win it, I'm sure we're all going to dedicate it to him, his family. Over the past few games, you've had immense support, home and away from the from the crowds. How important is it for you to have a big crowd behind you at Wembley and cheer you on on the day? Obviously, it's it's the crowd's going to be the you know the big thing. It'll be the biggest crowd any of us have ever played in front of, apart from Chris Wales, I suppose. But um, it's you know it'll be certainly be the biggest crowd I've ever played in front of. Um, so I'm I'm really hoping that we get we get a good turnout. I know it costs a lot of money for people to travel down and and all that, but hopefully we can make it worthwhile for the supporters and give them a great day. Are you confident going into the game? Yeah, you've got to be confident. I mean, there's there's nothing really between the two teams as far as the league goes. Um, West have got a really strong squad, but then so have we. And I think on a on a one-off day, it's probably a 50-50 game, and it'll be who can take the chances and who gets a little bit rubber the green. But I really don't think there's too much between the teams. There were emotional scenes when Dunstan realised they'd reached the final, but how does a manager prepare his players for such a big game? I don't know, because it's not as well going to Wembley every three weeks, you know what I mean? Um, we've just got to be ourselves, basically, and that's what we've done throughout the season. Um, just being honest with each other and putting an honest shift in, and that's what we'll go, go to Wembley and try and do, you know? Dunstan's opponents are local rivals West Auckland, and it's a credit to the Northern League to have two teams in the final. What does Billy Irwin think of the All-Northern League clash? I've been asked this a few times, you know, and it doesn't matter who's... We're at Wembley and it doesn't matter who'd be there. Um, we've got to play against them and it's obviously the, the whole of the North East and the Northern League especially is going to have a right old spin-off about it. You know, and They've got the bragging rights that they've got the best league in, throughout the country at this level. Uh, two good teams played each other four times this season. Not much between the two teams so hopefully it'll be a good, good day out for both teams. You've had tremendous support over the past few weeks and months really in, in this uh, VARS campaign. How important is that that, that continues at Wembley? Uh, it's massively important. We have got a really good hardcore of support as I'd follow it around in the Northern League and especially away in the VARS as you see in the last round. Um, and from what I've heard, there's tickets selling really well, busloads and trains and all sorts going, you know. So, um, it's for them as well, you know, putting Dunstan on the map and it'll give them, them will have a great weekend out. I wish I could be on their side as well as my <laughs> side, you know, but um, no, it's brilliant for them and it, everyone's talking about it wherever you go, you know, and um, it'll be the same in West Auckland, you know, great day for both clubs. As a squad, obviously I can only pick 11, which is going to be really tough on the day. Um, to me, the squad members that haven't been getting time on the pitch mean just as much to me as what the, the regulars do, you know. And they've stuck by us and they've been brilliant. Attitude and commitment to the club has been great, you know. Just want, want to finish it off at Wembley.